Hello and welcome to another Acrylico tutorial. Please watch until the end for many tips and tricks you can use on your future projects. Before we move on, I'd like to thank Derivative as well as our Patreons for their support. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification to support us into making more tutorials like this. For more tutorials and downloadable files, check out our Patreon and our Gumroad. There you'll have the chance to purchase toy files, Tox files, HD and 4K renders. For 20% off, just type A code as a discount code on the checkout. I'll leave all the links in the description. Now on to today's tutorial. Today we'll focus on the GeoText Comp, which renders text in 3D. This is only available on the 2022 version, so make sure you have updated before you start. The tutorial will be structured in two parts. In the first one, we will learn how to use the geotext and in the second part, we will build a spiral. So let's start. Let's press tab and create a geotext. I'll split the screen and set the second screen to Geometry Viewer. As soon as we do this, we'll see the word derivative displayed. Now we want to be able to type our own word instead and we also want to be able to control the position, the size as well as all the other attributes. So let's open the parameter window and in the first parameter here, the mode controls where the text is generated from. And here we have two options, either from the text parameter or a table that provided from the specification that. So let's select this mode instead. As soon as this is enabled, the spec that and the spec chop parameters will also be enabled. Here the text parameter is ignored and the data is taken from a dat table given in the specification dat parameter. Whereas the specification chop allows the use of chop data to set parameters of text blocks defined in the specification dat. Let's first create a table dat followed by a null. In the table dat, let's create a table with three rows and one column. Each row of the dot is a separate line of text, which can have different transforms, alignment, color and word wrap settings applied to them. The column headers should match the parameter name which the column is overriding. In this case, the parameter name is text. So this way, Touch Designer will recognize that what we write down on the rows below text will be the text which will be used in the geotext. So let's write H in the second row and I in the third one. Then from here we can drag and drop the null dot onto the specification dot parameter of the geotext. Then the letters H and I will get displayed. It will look odd in the beginning and the reason for this is the letters are being displayed in the exact same position. Now as we mentioned before, we can modify the parameters of the text defined in the specification dot with the chop we will define in the specification chop. So let's press tab and attach a pattern chop. In the parameter window, let's set the type to ramp and the length to 2. The length should be as high as the number of rows below the text parameter. Then let's open the channel tab. The channel name will decide which parameter of the text gets controlled with this chop. So we want the letters to get shifted horizontally so that we get the word high. For this, let's set the channel name to TX. Let's attach a null chop right after and drag and drop the null to the specification chop. Now the H is taking the value of 0 and the I is taking the value of 2. If we want to increase the distance between both letters, we can do this by increasing the amplitude in the pattern chop. And with a phase, we can shift both letters simultaneously. If we want to control the Y parameter instead, then all we have to do is change the channel name to TY instead and TZ for translating in the Z direction. Also, this doesn't only apply to translation values, but also to rotation values. So we can duplicate the pattern chop and connect a merge chop right after. In the second pattern chop, we can change the channel name to RY for rotation in the Y direction. Then, in the pattern tab, we can increase the amplitude and tweak the phase to affect the rotation of the letters. We notice here, though, that the letters are rotating along the beginning of the letter. 
If we instead change the channel name to LRY, then the letters will still rotate along Y, but the center of rotation will be the center of the letter. So with the L in the front, we have a local rotation, and if we remove it, there will be an absolute rotation. Great, so now we have an idea of how the geotext comp works. Now let's move on to the second part. In this part, we will create a spiral. In order for the spiral to be smooth, we need more rows in the table dot as well as multiple patterns with multiple samples. For this, I'll insert a tox file I've created which has three parameters. The first one is the text you want to be displayed. The second one is the number of characters. In this case, the number of characters is a thousand, so the text I typed before will be repeated so often until it has reached a thousand characters. Then the third parameter should be clicked after we change any of the previous ones. You can download these talks on our Patreon or create a table with the text you want. Let's attach a null after the talks and if we connect this to the next null, we will get an error. This happens because, as we mentioned before, the pattern length needs to be the same as the number of rows in the dot table. I'm gonna get rid of the previous table and create a constant chop. I'll use this chop to set the amount of letters we're going to have. So let's open the parameter window, we'll change the name to numcars and set the value to 1000. Let's make it viewer active and drag and drop it on the number of characters on the text database. This parameter is now dynamic, so I can change the number of characters later if I want. Let's repeat and drag and drop the number of characters to the length of the pattern chop. Let's also get rid of the rotation pattern for now. Our goal here was to make a spiral. In order to do this, we first need to make a circle and then multiply the circle with a ramp. And to create a circle, we will use two pattern chops. One, the one we already have with a sine type, and then we'll duplicate this and set the type of the new pattern to cosine. We'll merge them both and we'll get our circle. The letters right now are squished together, but if we select both patterns and increase the amplitude to 100, then zoom out, there we have our circle. To get from here to a spiral, we want the diameter of the circle to start small and then keep growing. Let's copy-paste the pattern, so to keep the length equal, and in the parameter window let's set the type to ramp. The channel name is not important, so let's just write radius for the radius of the spiral. Then let's attach a math and we will multiply the two channels. So combine chops to multiply. Now we won't see anything yet because the amplitude of the ramp is way too high, so let's decrease it to less than 1 and there we have our spiral. To get it more curvy and longer, we need to increase the number of cycles. Great, we're starting to get there. Let's select both pattern chops and decrease the amplitude value. Let's increase the size of the letters to also get them further apart. Let's duplicate another pattern chop, set the type to ramp and the channel name to SX, SY and SZ for the sizing in all directions. Let's attach a merge before the null and connect the new ramp pattern to it. In the parameter window, we'll increase the amplitude to 1. Now, because the type of the size pattern is set to ramp, we'll get smaller letters in the origin and they will increase as we move further out in the spiral. And from here, we can use the phase to animate this effect by typing abstime.seconds times 0.25. And this was it for this tutorial introducing the basics of the new text geocomp. If you want to learn more about this and see how we created these visuals, you can head on to our Patreon. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching until the end, I hope you learned something useful and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until then, have a great time! Bye!